Hello, my name is Gerngar, and it is time for another crafty love letter to video games and other nerdy things, specifically to a series that clearly has a hold over me and my life, Zelda. Specifically, uh, we are going to be doing Breath of the Wild. This game is truly full of so many charming, amazing, and wonderful details. So it's hard to choose where to start, but I decided to start with something that really adds a lot of flavor to each new area, the goddess statues. I looked around at all the statues from small to big to very big. And while I want to revisit a lot of these later, today I will start with one inspired by the Spring of Wisdom. It might be weird to say it like this, but I'm a big Nehru fan. Um, I even have a tattoo of her symbol on my arm, so it felt right to start with her. So let's start by first making the statues out of clay. I first needed to mix a gray. If you play with clay and do not have a pasta roller, I strongly recommend getting one. Notice how dry and sad my black clay is. It is so easy to make it workable with this device. A few minutes later and we have the perfect gray for our statue all mixed up. Polymer clay bakes best when thin, so it is time to make a foil inside. I decided to make some goddess statue earrings while I was at it, so that is what the small balls are for. Uh, check out my Insta for a look at them completed. Once I've covered the foil with a rough shape of clay, I will begin adding the details. I first map out the face before working on her outfit. While you watch me figure out her hair hood, I wanted to bring up my gloves. I'm wearing them because I have bandages, I don't want to get dirty, but also because they are wrinkly and will add a fun texture all over. Also, please ignore how the statue looks kind of like a weird finger. Time to give her arms and drape some more fabric over her to give her her base figure. Squish, squish, squash, squash her all over before using the tool to make it look like one cohesive piece of fabric. I'm also going ahead and to try to add some folds here to give it some life and flavor. Define all of the edges a little bit better before going in and adding the face. Finally, let's give this goddess some wings. I made a general butterfly wing shape before adding some feathers and other details. Here they are, all attached. Now I'm making her look nice and rocky with some aluminum foil and then a little wire brush. The final step before baking is giving her some more pigment. To do this, I'm just using some cheap craft pastels. For the purpose of this project, I know that most of the color is going to be painted over, so I'm just adding a nice mossy tone under it. After that's all baked, it's time to make a base. I'm first designing the base out on cardboard. I'm not really worried about making it 100% accurate to the game, I just wanted to have the same feel. I then drew the general outline onto the foam, and then snap, snap, we're all done. But I still need to give her an upper platform to sit on, so I cut that out, sized her on it, and gave it some details. I wanted to add a general stone pattern, so I used my little ball tool to etch that into there before adding some details on the side and then yet again using my beloved wire brush to rough it all up. I then needed to attach my pieces together. Those of you in the know will know that I'm making a big mistake right now because super glue does not bond foam. In fact, it just melts it. Notice my little divots of shame right there. I then try to correct my mistakes with some tacky glue. Again, with my handy dandy ball tool, we are going to map out where columns will go before adding some details to everything, which in this case right now is just more stone pattern. Now that we have everything planned out and just right, we are going to hack and slash our way to the final platform shape. Just kidding, I decided to add one more layer of the platform. Me deciding last minute to add more things is a common theme of this build. Despite me constantly disrespecting my foam and throwing it everywhere, it still looks a little bit too pretty, so let's go ahead and rough it up some more with our knife. Ooh, look at her. She's finally cleaning her workstation a little bit. Those of you with the clean workstations at all time, I don't know how you function. Let's make a little walkway to our shrine. Please witness my difficult struggle with the paper that is attached to the foam. After like 30 seconds of trying, I gave up and this is just our life now. 
I'm currently cutting out the stone that has the Nehru symbol on it. Spoiler alert, it turns out to be the best part of the build in my opinion. I am incredibly proud of it. Remember for old structures that you don't really want the lines to look pretty, so after you cut it out nicely, just hack away. Time to finally craft the columns. I did this by scoring the cardboard multiple times so that it would roll up nicely before cutting it down to a more appropriate size. In game, one of the columns is broken, so I made sure to sketch that out first before cutting it out, and then attach the column together with way too much tacky glue. It was kind of fun though, because to get the bottom on, I just kind of filled it all up with tacky glue and squished it around. The not broken column then needed a top, which I just put together with foam. Yep, looks cute. Then remembered a friend that was superior to tacky glue, hot glue. Hot glue is truly the savior of 99% of Minecraft projects. Like, look at that tacky glue top, it's not even remotely dry. Finally, we're able to witness all of the base put together with the stone on the walkway added to the front. And with that, we can finally take it away and mosh posh it. Just kidding, I've decided to add more work for myself. This time though, the work is a good idea. I decided to make a base to add fake water to since the Spring of Wisdom is kind of like in a little pond. Slap it down aggressively on your table for good measure. I also went ahead at this time to add some spackle to the crevices so that way we wouldn't have like weird gaps anywhere. Spackle also adds some neat stony texture. This goes on pink, uh, but when it dries, it turns white. I also added it over the cardboard so it would be better textured there too. And finally, with that being said, it is time to take it away and mosh posh it. And with black mosh posh added everywhere, we can finally get to painting. Just kidding, one last thing. Once the mosh posh dried, I realized that the symbol at the front was not defined enough, so I went ahead and used one of my circular clay cutters to make a new symbol out of cardboard. I used an X-Acto knife to follow my pattern as close as possible. Uh, the X-Acto knife was very annoying and didn't cut through the cardboard as well as it should have. But don't worry, it did cut through something else pretty well. And with that all cut out of cardboard, time to attach it to the base with some black Mod Podge. If you don't know what this is, it kind of just seals everything in nicely so it takes paint better and you're not just wasting all of your paint which makes it another staple along with hot glue on pretty much every craft. I then decided I was done with cardboard for now, so I used these little stick-on gems to make the circles on the inside of the symbol. My hoarding of craft supplies has finally paid off because they were the perfect size, and after that I just attached more Maj Podge over them. This time not to really seal anything, but to give us more of a uniform color. Another great idea struck me to turn the base from that way to this way. That way we can have a bigger pond. A bigger pond means more detail, so right now I am mapping out where I want to put the sunken Hyrule Crest platform thing. And it is now time for my series of less great ideas featuring Maj Podge. I am mixing Maj Podge and paint and a little bit of water because the idea is I want to paper mache some tissue paper to add like a stone effect at the bottom of the lake. And I think that I had some good ideas in the base of this, but to be honest, despite letting it sit for a really long time, it never dried. But here's something that did dry and turned out pretty cool, which are the columns that will sit in the water later. I did them pretty much the same way as the ones I did earlier, which is cardboard, glue, and spackle. I then added some green stuff to my fake stones to make myself feel better about whatever this was, and you don't even get to see this later, so please enjoy them for now. Alright, let's finally really paint. So I'm going to start by just adding some gray all over to add a nice base. I'm kind of mostly stippling this on because I want some of the black to shine through in the deeper crevices. I also went ahead and added some green to highlight the joints before finally doing some dry brushing to add highlights in a little lighter of a gray. I'm sorry for my autofocus kind of going crazy during this part. I promise I will fix it in the future. 
However, um, I did want to show this because dry brushing is the most satisfying part because this is where the stone texture finally shines through. This is mostly going to be hidden later. This is the uh, sunken platform that has the Hyrule crest on it. It's going to go under the water, um, but I still wanted to add all the effects to it. I also went ahead and painted the goddess statue in pretty much the exact same way. Um, it doesn't look as magical of a transformation via my camera though. Cannot forget the little tiny baby combs, which again, get a dry brushing, which looks so nice with that spackle. I then went in with an even lighter gray into key areas to kind of give it a little bit more of a stone effect. I am so, so, so happy with how these combs turned out. Um, once the paint went on, they look so good. Here I'm adding a little bit of a black wash to dirty everything up because it's supposed to have sat on the mountain forever. Um, it looks a little bit dark here, but I promise it dries up a lot lighter. Remember earlier where I said I have a lot of mistakes with Mosh Posh? Here's where the fun truly starts. Before we get into my terrible wrongdoings, let's just appreciate it all together. So for this next part, I need to add the water to the pond. Well, I decided not to add resin for a couple of reasons. Number one, I did not have a spot in my garage set up for it. Number two, I've had bad experiences with resin before. So I decided to add a hot glue like surrounding to the whole pond. Then I was like, what if I add some Maj Paj for the water? While we watch Paskarin make her mistakes in the background, let me explain why this went wrong. Number one, uh, that hot glue was not exactly as secure as it should have been and Maj Paj just leaked under the statue and never dried. Uh, number two, I added too thick of a layer of Maj Paj and that also never dried. Um, I let this sit for multiple days and this is as far as it got. Notice how white it still is, but I got tired of waiting, so yep. While I'm dry brushing in the background, aka the one thing keeping me positive and going, you might notice some blue in the water area. For that, um, I just kind of added some watered down paint and mixed it around in there because I wanted to add some different color variants when I got the water together. Also, while I was self-pity dry brushing, um, I did feel like some areas ended up too dark after that black wash. So I just kind of used some light, light, almost white to highlight around the different parts of the bottom base. I also felt like there's too big of a gap at the bottom of the statue. It kind of like bulbed out while it was baking. So I went ahead and added the only air dry clay I had on hand, which is this terrible, terrible Crayola stuff that I recommend never getting, but I have like 20 pounds of it. So, yep. I then continued my Maj Posh crime by adding yet another layer of more Maj Posh over the stuff that never dried. And since it never dried, I was like, what if I use a blow dryer? And this ended up being a terrible, terrible idea because all it ended up doing was just creating a like hard layer over the soft layer so the inner stuff totally never dried. But yeah, this is probably the best the Maj Posh ever looked. So I recommend don't do it. I did, however, want more layers and more color variation. So at this point, I added some white to add kind of a frozen effect, which ended up not being needed for reasons that I will discuss later. I also realized I covered up a little bit too much of the detail. So I went ahead and dabbed some of that away to lead us to uh, this look. If you played the game, you'll know that the Spring of Wisdom is on top of a snowy mountain, so of course I had to add some snow. I did this by mixing up some paint and some glue and a little bit of this like fake plastic sugar stuff. It ended up adding kind of a nice texture. I did it in two different sizes because I also had some kind of big stuff. If you want fake sugar, you can get it from Decadent Kits. In the future though, I might just get fake snow flock and I think that would also end up very nice. As an alternative, some people use baking soda, but that will just ruin your bottle over time. 
and I kind of wanted to keep this around without the chemical reactions. But yeah, since this was thicker than paint, I used a toothpick and a stirring stick and kind of just shoveled it where I thought snow might go. Also, also, you might notice another layer of water in that pond. Well, I found the true savior of the builds, and that is Elmer's glue. It works so much better for water. It actually dries. 10 out of 10. I recommend it. Back to the snow. I am again just dabbing it where snow should go, I guess. This is probably a part where I should mention that I am from the deep south, and I have not really seen a lot of snow in my life, so I don't actually know where snow naturally accumulates. I just used my best judgment, so don't judge me too much if you are from a snowy place. I then had the brilliant idea to try to put baby powder over everything, and that did not really work out the way I thought it would. Um, I think it's because I put it over like glue, and you're supposed to put it with like spray adhesive. Um, so I just ended up making a huge mess over everything. Yay. So since baby powder did not work for a gentle snow effect, um, I returned back to that mixture that I made with the glue, paint, and fake sugar, and I just kind of added it wherever I thought it might look nice. I ended up going a little bit overboard with it, but that's because it was very therapeutic and very relaxing to do. So, sorry, not sorry. And here's everything after it's been dried. So the baby powder ended up adding kind of a cool effect to the water. It made it look kind of like a frozen lake. So that's why I said earlier, I didn't really need to add the paint effects. However, um, it did cover too much of it. So I went in with some acetone to just clean it up so we could still see some of the sunken platform and of the different paints. And with that, we're all done and ready for the final shots. Thank you for watching and sticking with me as I learn through failing. Please come back and join me next time for the next crafty love letter. Here's a little hint for what I have planned next.